Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 8 in the authentication module titled 2FA Broken Logic. Alright, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Select all labs. Do a search on authentication labs and select lab number eight titled 2FA Broken Logic. All right, let's get started. This lab's two-factor authentication is vulnerable due to its flawed logic. To solve the lab, access Carlos's account page. We've got our credentials as a regular user, and then we've got the victim's username, which is Carlos. And then it says over here, you also have access to the email server to receive your 2FA verification code. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit the 2FA logic flaw to access Carlos's account. We have Carlos's username, but we don't have his password or his 2FA verification code. All right, let's access the lab. Notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. I am using the professional version of Burp because we do need to use Intruder to automate the attack, and Intruder is heavily throttled in the community edition, and so you do have to use the professional version for this exercise or write your own script to complete the exercise. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is learn how the application functions. So we're gonna click on my account and log in with the regular user credentials that we were given. Hit login. Notice over here, it makes two requests. The first one is a post request that contains your username and password. That redirects you to another request, login to. So I'll just send all these requests to repeater. Now, the second request over here is a get request to the slash login to endpoint, which sends you a four digit security code to your email address so that you could authenticate using two factor authentication or multi factor authentication. So we're going to go to our email client right over here, find the email. Our code is 0932. Let's copy that, put it in here, and hit login. And here we go. Okay, so the second request we're interested in over here is the one that sends us a 2FA token. Let's send this one to repeater. And then the third request we're interested in is the post request where you actually put in your MFA code and then it logs you in. So let's send this one to repeater as well. All right, so when you're testing the authentication component of an application, what you do is essentially view the requests and then see if there are any potential flaws in the requests that are responsible for authentication. The first one is a post request to the login page, which takes in the username and password. This looks completely normal. The second one is an endpoint slash login to that generates the 2FA token that gets sent to your email address. Now, if we look over here, it doesn't take any parameters in the URL of the request. However, you could see over here in the cookie field, there's a session token, which is normal because it needs to be able to maintain the session across requests. However, there's another cookie over here called verify, which takes in the username of the user, which is odd. 
Now my guess over here is this verify token takes in the username and then based on this value, the backend sends the 2FA token to this username over here, which is terrible because this way you could just change the username over here and send the 2FA token to another user. That is a vulnerability. However, it's not a big deal because if you're just sending a 2FA token to another user, you still can't access their account without accessing their email address. So we do need to find another vulnerability, but this is a start. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the session token completely because this one is tied to the regular user account. And then we're just going to call this Carlos. Hit send. So far, so good. I get a 200 OK message and it tells me, please enter your four digit security code. So my guess over here is it did send Carlos a 2FA token. I don't have access to Carlos's email client. So I need to find another vulnerability in order to access Carlos's account. But so far we found two vulnerabilities. One is that it depends on client side parameters in order to perform authentication decisions. And two, the session management in this application is broken because you could see over here, we removed our session token, yet it's still giving us access to this page and this page should be authenticated. So, so far there's two vulnerabilities. We need to find a third one to access Carlos's account. So let's go over here for step number three. It's a post request to the slash login to endpoint and it takes in the MFA code. All right, interesting. So over here, it still takes in the verify cookie, which takes in the username of the user and then the session token. I'm just gonna remove this and see what happens. Hit send. Okay, so this still, sends me to the slash my account page, which means you don't actually need a valid session. All you need is the correct MFA code over here that is tied to this username over here in order to log into the user's account. This means that the username and password are actually not required, which is good because I don't have Carlos's password. So now all I have to do is guess Carlos's MFA code. So let's change this to Carlos and see what happens. Hit send. We get a 200 OK. And if we render over here, you could see it says incorrect security code. All right. So now what I need to do is guess this MFA token in order to log into Carlos's account. I don't actually need to know his password. This might be difficult if there's some kind of brute force mechanism on this application, but my guess is there isn't. So let's hit send a few more times. If after five times it doesn't log you out, that means there's no brute force protection on this page, which is another vulnerability. So far, this whole authentication mechanism contains about four or five vulnerabilities. So let's send this to Intruder. In Intruder over here, let's clear everything and then add on this parameter over here. So this is the token that we want to guess. We'll keep it at Sniper, go to Payloads, and then go to brute forcer and then remove all of this because it's just integers and then the minimum length is four and the maximum length is four and you can see over here the payload count is 10,000 so we're going to be performing 10,000 requests which is near to impossible if you're using the community edition of intruder so let's click on start attack and what we're looking for is a 302 redirect that redirects us to the My Account page. Now, while this is running, I do need to point out that before you run your intruder attack, you have to make this request right over here. So if we go to repeater, I made a request to the get slash login to endpoint with the cookie set to Carlos so that my token gets sent to the Carlos account. If you don't perform this request, Carlos won't get a four digit code. And so even if you brute force all the possibilities, you won't ever be logged into Carlos's account because Carlos was never sent a four digit security code. All right, let's order on status to see if so far we've gotten a 302 and it doesn't look like it. All right, the attack completed and look at that. We get a 302 redirect on the payload 1589. And if we look at the redirect location or URL, it's to the slash my account page. So we've identified the token that was sent to the Carlos account. Let's copy the session ID, right click, inspect, 
go to application and under cookies right over here we're just going to change that to the session token of the carlos account that we just received and then we'll just remove this cookie over here so let's delete it and then just visit the my account page hit enter and here we go so you could see if we remove this we're logged in as carlos and it says congratulations you solved the lab all right so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability using burp intruder we usually script our exploits in Python. However, this exercise does require multi-threading because 10,000 requests done individually is gonna take an incredibly long time, but multi-threading is out of scope for this course. And so I'll leave the scripting portion as an exercise. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.